It's been said that information is the oxygen of democracy. Nowhere is an independent media more needed than in a place like Somalia, which has seen over 16 years of violence at the hands of domestic warlords and foreign troops. Somali journalists face untold dangers. Here's the story of a group of brave individuals and the terrible price they've paid to provide neutral reporting and a dialogue for peace in Somalia. Mogadishu, the destroyed capital of Somalia. Since the fall of the government in 1991, the people here have been abandoned in the midst of ongoing fighting. Through the years, millions have fled this failed state and sought refuge in other countries. Yet even in the comfort of new lives in places like Ottawa, many find it hard to forget their homeland. Believing that truth is more important than the gun, three Somali-Canadian refugees, including Ahmed Adan and Mohamed Elmin, opened a television and radio station in Mogadishu in 1999. The aim of Horn Afrique is impartial news coverage and negotiating peace through dialogue. Thank you. On this day in 2003, Ahmed is going to join their third partner who is holding down the fort in Mogadishu. Because of the danger, they take shifts there. Mohammed will stay in Ottawa and look after all the families. Going back to Somalia, the hottest spot on earth especially to go with a media, hot, conflict issue, thin line to walk on all the time. In Mogadishu, they are on their own. No government or embassy to turn to in an emergency. Ahmed is planning to stay for a year at the Horn Afrique station, which employs 35 journalists and 15 technicians. The station must be protected at all times because of the ever-present danger. Ali Sharmake is the third partner. Since he's been coping on his own, there's a lot for Ahmed to catch up with about business and programming. Their vision is to foster peace in conflict and so prove that the word is more powerful than the gun. Their aim is to provide a voice for Mogadishu's voiceless citizens. The most important is the weaker one. Every day you realize another segment of the society that were marginalized. Mogadishu is a city of one million where there's no law and order. It's a perfect example of survival of the fittest. Each day, Horn Afrique's television crews head out to cover Mogadishu's news, always accompanied by the station's hired militia. The reports they bring back contain information that allow the people here to make up their own minds about what's really going on in their conflict-ridden city. Ten years of devastation created a situation where no one is sure about their neighbors, about their family, about their community. This was an opportunity to create that environment where we know about each other. We know what's happening in every part of Mogadishu. All attempts to form a functioning government over the last 16 years have failed. Now a transitional government supported by Ethiopian troops and the United States fights opposition and insurgents. Our reporters are continually harassed. They're always caught up in the middle. And a number of times their cameras were taken. They report about a city where the reality is frighteningly simple. Those with guns will eat, those without face starvation. That's the gunfire. That's a gunfire now. What we heard now is a gunfire. It's just, it reminds you, <laughs> all the time it reminds you the situation. You don't need to forget. <laughs> it reminds you, the bullet. The three founders started with the phone-in talk show. 
They'd become used to the format in Canada, but it was totally new to Mogadishu. It electrified the city. Now, with this medium, we were able to facilitate someone from anywhere in the city to be able to talk to each other about what is happening in Mogadishu that day. Who's killing what and what's the base for that? But the warlords, who each have their own radio stations broadcasting propaganda and hatred to divide the people, were not amused. As soon as Horn Afrique opened, they attacked. One of those warlords was Mohammed Kanare. I control the area, that area, so I have to know what is going on. I am not saying I am 100% perfect, but I control them. At that time was when Mogadishu population really supported us, big time. They were saying our liberty, our chance and opportunity to speak out and express our opinion. This is the first chance we ever had in Somalia, and these guys are trying to stop. So the city come uh, to us and rescue us from uh, that struggle, actually. Once the radio was up and running, they started the television using exactly the same approach. Ordinary people talking to each other, exploring ways to solve the conflict. Bit by bit, the warlords realized that it was becoming very popular, and if they wanted to get their voices out there, they had to get in on the act. This is one of them, Mogadishu warlord Osman Ali Atto, famously portrayed as General Aidid's financier in the Hollywood film Black Hawk Down. Horn Afrique had a strict editorial policy for dealing with the warlords. Don't try to silence us. You have a position, we'll be prepared to give you the interview. But you also sit on the table and you accept calls from the people. It's very important that people will, will have the capacity to challenge you as well. We are not a propaganda machine for any particular person or group. For the evening program, they've invited three street children to come to the studio and talk about their lives. If they ask me to be a neutral between the dying child and the warlord that is killing, count me out. Here is a means to help. As many, many children fall through the cracks, they tend to develop different skills. Some uh, do menial services, others actually are lured into the warlord business. And so in the end they become part of the militia. The worrisome part is that thousands of these children will grow up abandoned with guns on the street and they become adults tomorrow. And they become the future of this society. And I don't know what will happen at them. Yeah, well, the last caller say he will take care of one of them. It was a beautiful program. I love it, really. <laughs> Hello. Back in Ottawa, there's an emergency. Yeah. Ali's wife, Lul, has oh, yeah. had an accident. Oh, okay. I, love you. I love you, too. She fell downstairs and broke her leg. She and the children are alone. Do you want to talk to daddy, mommy? Do you want to talk to daddy? Okay, sit down, Daddy. I miss you, all of you. I miss you. I miss you. So you start a new year, new class. I'm in grade two and grade three. Okay, I love you. Give to mommy. Hi, honey. Hey, what's your Every time they ask you when you're coming home. It's a hammer hitting your head. And sometimes you cannot say, I'm coming tomorrow. You, uh, I cry on the telephone more than once.
Then, in January 2004, Horner Freak was once again attacked. Ali, are you safe yourself? It's all of you. Are you safe? Yes, we are safe. Uh, no, is there anything particular uh, concerning that instigated that they have to come and uh, take over the station? There was a news item uh, involves a book written by a Ethiopian scholar about al Ittihad al Islamiyah of Somalia. Okay. And in some part of the book, they mm -hmm. list the names they associated with al Ittihad. Mm -hmm. Al Ittihad al Islami is a Somali Islamic fundamentalist group which has been accused of ties to acts of terrorism and al Qaeda. We know that it is dangerous to operate in that part of the world. We know how. Uh, delicate it is uh, that really things can uh, fall apart uh, but unless somebody either us or others step in and take that danger that's on the edge I don't think things will happen by themselves One Afrique did get back on the air but it didn't get any easier as they encountered increasing friction with Somalia's dangerous new geopolitical realities its efforts for neutral reporting remained difficult, especially when it came to reporting about the marginalized. The importance of issue increases as those who involve the status of those involved decreases. During 2007, Horn Afrique has been increasingly censored and at times closed down. In April 2007, it was shelled by Ethiopian troops, one of the foreign forces backing Somalia's transitional government. Just four months later, in August 2007, tragedy struck. An announcer at Horn Afrique was shot dead as he arrived for work. Horn Afrique co-founder Ali Sharmarke sped to the funeral, held the same day, a tradition in Somali culture. He spoke out at the burial, saying, the killing was meant to prevent a real voice that described the suffering in Mogadishu to other Somalis and the world. He was a symbol of neutrality. Just a few minutes later, as he left the funeral, Ali too was assassinated his car targeted by a remotely detonated landmine. Let us also celebrate the life Back in Ottawa, a memorial was held to honor his life, attended by the two remaining Horn Afrique founders. People are being killed for doing the right thing. We do not want it to leave the impression that the people who deliberately targeted Ali and Mahat that morning, who wanted to silence Horn Afrique and the media, who wanted to destroy that dream of, of for many Somalis, we don't want that to succeed too. I mean, many people just look at Ali as a journalist. Ali was not just a journalist, Ali was a peacemaker. Every hour of his time, he was working on peace. How can we get this country back to normal? And that's a huge, huge task. We have no choice but to go back and to work over there. Uh, if we don't, uh, Ali's death is uh, death on, in, in vain. Horn Afrique continued on the air after the assassinations, but for all media outlets, it's a struggle. Other broadcasters in Somalia have been closed.